Good morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a brand new day from Shigao. So today we are here in Shigao and I'm about to do a very interesting vlog. So this vlog is going to be very interesting. Make sure to watch this video till the end because today we're going to be talking about the tiny house and what it takes to actually build a tiny house in the Philippines. So look at this house right here. This is the house of my friend Ta. And a lot of you guys who've been watching the vlogs uh, recently, you know my friend Ta. So today we are about to do the official video of the tiny house. But look here this morning, guys. We have a lot of motorcycles here. I don't know why, but uh oh there's a tricycle there this is really strange because usually we have just one motorcycle here all right but that's not the topic of this video but if you are someone who live who's living abroad or you are just one foreigner like myself who's thinking about building a house in the philippines and you want to know what it's going to cost you or the process of building a house here in the philippines make sure to stay tuned and ladies and gentlemen i'm success i do travel videos around the philippines and around the world soon around the world and if you want to stay tuned for all of my travels make sure to smash that subscribe button and welcome to the vlog so let's dive right into the video so we're going to talk to ty this morning it's a very beautiful day as you can see it's a sunny day blue skies everywhere and that's the best weather i've ever experienced here in Chicago. so this is the tiny house right here before ty comes outside i'm just going to show you guys Look at the tiny house here. So this is, it is not actually tiny. Yeah, for some people it is tiny, but he decided to name the house tiny house, but it's actually big compared to apartments in Manila. So let us welcome the man Ta on the welcome. channel. Good morning, my friend. Welcome to the tiny house, Chargao. Buhay ni Ta. Welcome guys. I'm so, I'm so happy you're here to see the tour. It's the first official tour. I haven't even done one of these on my channel yet. Uh, we're actually still under some construction. We're, we're at the very last steps of the construction right now, but we'll give you guys a, a full tour of everything that's been constructed so far. We'll show you guys what the future plans are. It's also right. the first time that I'm announced this house will be available to rent at some point in the future. Right now, we're only renting it to close friends, family. Uh, but if you are interested, obviously you can message the tiny house on Instagram.com. Uh, you just shoot us a message at the tiny house. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just before we start this vlog, all I want you to do is to hear that in the description below. I have a link there for Buhai Nita. So Buhai Nita, it's a YouTube channel of my friend Ta. So that's his new YouTube channel where he's gonna uh, upload videos about the tiny house, his life in the Philippines, and just, you know, updates from the Philippines. Chickens, yeah. My chickens. Yeah, so uh, just before we dive into the house tour today, can you show us a little bit of your chickens? And yeah, your... well, first of all, welcome to the tiny house. All right. Uh, we're, we're based here in Santa Fe. It's a barangay uh, General Luna, Chargao. All right. We're here on a little access road. It's, a, it's just a nice dirt road, but we've built a nice perimeter fence here, which is uh, packed with uh, birds of paradise. All right. The yard, the idea for the yard was to have an open space here where you could really, really feel comfortable enjoying do yoga relax have a picnic with your friends whatever you want that, that was the idea of this big open yard uh and it's always been my dream to have free ranging chickens all right now the problem is i imported some special breed of chickens they're called chinese silkies i'll show you guys them. Uh, they're they're a little bit more valuable than the the normal native chickens in Chargao, and so for that reason i can't just easily have them roaming around the yard as of right now um This is my my big cock, not my actual big cock, but my. <laughs> uh, his name is Big Bubba. He's a Chinese silky chicken. So we built him this really cool enclosure. It's kind of like a chicken house. I'm currently breeding these guys. It's, from my knowledge, the only chickens like this in Chargao at the moment. Nobody else has any of them. So I'm breeding them right now, and hopefully we'll be selling them or giving them away to some cool people in the future. All right. Um, but that was the idea. The nice thing is, when you come and stay here, you get. Free eggs every morning, every day. You see, you've been here. I get an yeah. egg almost every day. All right. Uh, sometimes two eggs. All right. And that's the idea is this house, when you walk around in the garden, you have jackfruit here, you have lemongrass, you have birds of paradise, you have calamansi, you've got camote growing here. The idea is that the house can be somewhat self-sustaining. We're going to have mint, basil, all kinds of herbs, dill growing in the yard. So when you come here and you want to cook, because you're a little bit more off-grid when you're in this house, okay. you'll have free eggs. You'll have chicken, you'll have uh, you'll have birds of paradise, you'll have whatever you want to eat to consume here, just here in the yard. All right. uh, banana amazing, leaves man. that you could plate, you know. 
That's amazing, man. So yeah. that you could play your Buddha fight. Exactly. <laughs> so if you don't know what is Buddha fight, it's kind of like a way Filipinos uh, eat here. They actually put the food on the banana leaf. On the banana leaf. And then everyone just eat it. Mm. The nice thing is with banana leaf, you can cook with it. I mean, you can wrap chicken in it and it actually retains flavor. Yeah. Cooking and they also, they also use it to make a rice. The sticky rice yep. stuff, yeah, I've and tasted nice it. It's really is good. Eventually, these will actually make bananas too. Oh yeah, you can. They're still young that. right now, but like hopefully next season we'll actually have bananas from here too. So I'll whoever come back stays next in this season, house, you know, you're gonna have tons of food here in the yard. Yeah. So this is the exterior, like of the yard. Yeah. And can you t show us a little bit around the house? So yeah. as as Tar said, uh, the house is still undergoing construction, but. It is actually 98%. Yeah. And the, the house. For the most part, we're done. This little, uh, this little corner here. And so this whole house is being designed, in a sense, uh, by two people. There's this really amazing guy. His name is Rodol. He's from a barangay called Osmenia. All and right. he designed a tiny house that I copied the design of. All and right. then we basically expanded on it. We made it a little bit bigger and a little bit more structurally integral. Now, for this wall, uh, my good friend Sar from Arca and uh, Happiness, All right. he helped me design a wall that can kind of be Instagrammable, right? When you come and stay here, uh, you're going to want a nice wall to take a picture on to remember your time in the tiny house. So here we just have some native plants that are growing here some cool cocoa lumber shelves, all of this stuff has been recycled. This is all wood that we are recycling from the construction site. And you've got this beautiful orange wall with a nice uh, panning on the top of black. And you can just kind of enjoy sitting down here soon. You know, like one of the things that's coming is some nice cushions for this area. Right. So you can actually sit comfortably and enjoy your time in here. Um, wow, amazing, man. From the outside of here, right now, this is all still undergoing a little bit of construction. It was very important for me to have a foot bath as well. So you actually have a foot bath here. You can clean your feet because it does get muddy, especially during the rainy season. And you don't want to track all that mud and rain inside. All and right. what we're working on right now to avoid walking on the grass and to avoid on the... Uh, um, we're, we're making stepping stones and we'll show right. you that it's actually being constructed right now So you'll be able to walk across the entire yard straight here Left back and straight here without having to step on the grass or any mud. Yeah, so that the grass cannot you know fade from the ground exactly and you can just maintain them to have a beautiful yard with a beautiful carpet here that you can enjoy And the idea of this house was while it's a small house and it really is a tiny house because once we go inside You'll see how small actually the house is uh, the idea is that on the property, it's 235 square meters, the land, you'll have everything that you possibly need to enjoy your time in Shargao. Everything that you possibly need. Right. We're trying to avoid having to leave the property to get anything done. So for example, you have here a full-fledged automatic washing machine that's seven kilos. Uh, and you know, it, this can wash for any backpacker or traveler pretty much your entire Wow, so you don't, you don't, you don't, you, 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 you're actually going to save up because you don't need to go to the laundry. You don't need to pay. do the laundromat. You can do everything here. And because there'll be a caretaker here to help you too. Yeah, that's amazing, you man. You can get all the laundry done right here on the property. You don't actually have to leave anywhere. Right. Uh, and as well, we've got a storage shed here. This is something we just finished constructing right now. We're actually still in the process of it. Uh, you can see we're, we're just going to be storing. Right now, it just has the skateboards that I used to build here in Chargada. We'll have power tools here, chicken food, whatever you want. Um, you can see these are the molds of the stepping stones that we're creating. Oh, so okay. the stepping stones are, the top layer of it is uh, this thing called uh, black sand. It's these pebbles to make walking on it more comfortable All right. and more tactile. So that's what we're working on here. You can see the stepping stones. We're going to have a bunch of these all across the yard so you never have to step on the grass. You can just walk on these. Okay. Uh, I guess we, we shouldn't show this because it's all trash. Yeah, it's okay because they are still working, right? This is, again, this is all stuff that we need in the Philippines. It's very common to burn this stuff. So usually to get rid of all this trash because there's no proper trash collection here at the moment. We're probably going to have to burn this. If I can find a different solution to it, I'd like to because I don't want to burn trash because it's not great for the environment. But uh, it's just that's what the common thing is to do here. So you kind of have to live like the locals when you're here. Yeah, and you also have this uh, cool like water yeah we've got an amazing water reservoir system. here yeah, yeah so that if, if so we will three, run out of water yeah we got a three force water pump uh three force horsepower with a pressurized water tank so it supplies really high power pressure for every valve and every faucet in the house as well we got a connecting pipe that goes to the top here it's a 220 gallon uh water collection unit so even when you have a brownout which happens pretty frequently in Chargon, 
So even when you have a brownout, that happens pretty frequently in Shargal, you will always have access to water. It's not going to be the best quality water and it won't be the most pressurized water because it's not coming out of the pressurized tank. But using the gravity from the top of this tank, it'll trickle down into the shower and you can use water even when there's a brownout, which is very important. Yeah. Next up, my favorite area of the entire house, and I'm sorry again for the mess because we're still in the construction site. This is the kitchen. Uh, this kitchen was designed by my good friend, uh, Chef Philip from Goodies and the food truck here in Chargao and myself. We designed this kitchen together to again, serve the purposes of any traveler coming to Chargao. We wanted a solution, not only to enjoy food with your barcada, with your friends, with whoever you want, but also to actually be able to serve food here. You have a full bar that seats four people that you can actually serve and plate food to. So the idea is in the future, potentially we will do events here where we can do uh, special pop-ups and have chefs come here and cook special meals for small groups of people. That's kind of the idea. But again, okay. it is a tiny house. This kitchen is actually the largest space in the entire house. It's 18 square meters or around 20 square meters. All, right. all said and done. It's concrete flooring, everything. Um, we've got concrete countertop island and all the finishings, like all the wood, all the shelves, everything is made out of three-fourths plywood. Yeah. You say you, you, you got inspired by Philip or? Yeah, me and Philip designed this kitchen together. All right, based, oh, okay, together. Yeah, based on how a chef would want a kitchen to be. Okay. You know, again, we still have things coming in like cabinets and spice racks, but this is like the uh, dishwashing area. You've got a knife rack with plenty of knives. You've got every tool and utensil imaginable that you can ever possibly want in a kitchen. Obviously, the organization is still not there because we're we're, we're still just at the finishing point. All right. um, and instead of having, for example, a water uh, a water dispenser, we built a custom using a little water thing that we bought in Lazada. This actually dispenses water through a pipe. It's all electronic and it's chargeable. So even when there's a brownout, this thing will work. And you have the water. <laughs> How's that water? Mm. Mm. Yeah. It tastes like a tiny water. <laughs> you got the water gallons just right down here. So you never have to worry about uh, having water or missing water in this house. You're always gonna have a nice collection of water and it doesn't have to hook up to any big machine that's taking up space here. Right. Uh, to close off the kitchen, to keep it cool in here and a little bit more private, we have these thick bow curtains that were custom made for the house. All, right. All of these can be pulled up and uh, open if you want the kitchen entirely open. But recently I found that I really just like it closed like this. It just makes it so much nicer and cooler in here. Yeah, sure from the outside. Yeah. So that's the view of the kitchen from the outside right here. The house looks a lot bigger than it is when these curtains are down. But when you pick up all these curtains and you actually see what the house is, it's a very small house. The interior is very, very small. Right. But the kitchen, it makes up a big space. All right. For me, it was important because we are on a wild island with lots of animals and lots of critters. Success has been here for two weeks now. He has seen how many animals and dogs and cats and things run through here. Yeah. It was important for me to leave all the food and all the stuff that could attract animals to the outside of the house. Yeah. And the inside should be food free, remain clean of any food because you don't want the animals coming inside. Sure. All right. So shall we do the interior, interior. side of the house? Again, I apologize for the mess because we're still under construction. Yeah, it's okay, but make sure to uh, make sure to uh, to just tell us from the start like from here, you know, going in the house. Cool sliding glass door uh, that was custom made. All all the glass in here obviously had to be custom made. So it's got a just a normal black frame on the inside. Everything here on the first floor was made out of a uh, four size a hollow block and it was lathered down uh, plastered cement. So all the walls are finished really um a little bit more rough oh i but i love the texture you know yeah the texture is nice actually when you touch it and then the ground is uh very soft very slippery you know like very smooth yeah um that was the idea and all, all, the whole you know the whole interior was finished with this varnish so it gives the the wall a little bit of shine just to protect the concrete a little bit more yeah um the interior space here again this this is the tiny house. This actually is what the tiny house is. It's very, very small. You have a lot of musical instruments here. Lots of musical instruments. The entire space down here makes up 15 square meters. So so uh, your guests who are going to visit the house, are they allowed to use these musical instruments? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> we will see about it. Uh, most of my friends have advised me not to leave the instruments out because they'll get ruined. But I know it's a great part of the experience to come here and to be able to jam. Again, this for me, this house 
It's about creation, it's about music, it's about having fun, about being creative. So I want to leave these musical instruments here. But we'll see. We're gonna have to beta test it. Yeah, so let us know when you have decided on the musical instruments because people might just want to play, you know. But, but yeah, it's, it's, all, uh, it's all up to you. Yeah, it's all up to me. It's if I want to keep them or not. And, and we'll see. I think I would really like to have people have access to them, you know, because it's I just imagine a group of friends coming here or a couple coming here and being able to jam together on the ukulele and the guitar be so much fun. All right, so. uh, but yeah, this downstairs area, which makes up the actual portion of the tiny house, is only 15 square meters. It's very, very small. All By right. standards of any house, it's a very small house. The loft is what makes it a lot larger. But we'll this talk is, about the downstairs yeah, area. Yeah, this is first. really cool, man. Yeah, these are some custom shelves that we made from, from hardwood here in Chargao. Uh, all the little statues that you see here are native animals of the Philippines. And the point of make, putting all these up was for conservation purposes. I want to eventually put some sort of infographic here that explains what each animal is. So when people come and stay here, they can understand the conservation of these animals. For example, we have the pangolin from Palawan. We have the uh, the whale shark, the butanding. We have the sea turtle up there. We have the carabao, which is a native animal. We have some stingrays and some squid over here. Um, these are all native animals of the Philippines that are made from native designs native wood here in uh, palawan all of these are designed from native artists all right um and they're all intermingled with plants from the philippines you have some snake plants some vines some other vines some orchids um and some musical instruments you have a yucca plant down here uh and <clears throat> over here you have this amazing custom desk that we built out of a uh, native hardwood as well and if you enter a youtuber house this is these are things that you see <laughs> the drones yeah uh, but you have you have this native desk that uh is supposed to serve the purposes of a creation space you know you should be able to work here use the internet we have very fast internet here in the tiny house which is rare yeah. in chargao um so you'll be able to work here from your computer you have a nice wi-fi stand um again it's a it's a mess because we don't have any place to store all this stuff yet so i apologize for that but uh, once this is all cleaned up and nice, it'll be a perfect working space. Down here on the ground, we have an amazing Persian carpet that we purchased in Cebu. This actually came from Iran. It was handmade in Iran and it's super, super comfortable. And this couch was purchased in Cagayan de Oro. And you got my setup right here as a, YouTube, successful setup. as a YouTuber. So look here, I have my computer right here and I was just doing some little bit of editing. Sorry for that, guys. Sorry, sorry for that. So, yeah. But success, you have been sleeping on this couch for two weeks. Can Bro. you vouch for this couch? Uh, yeah, I want to talk about this couch a little bit. What I love about it is that, uh, as you can see here, um, you have this big couch right here. This is actually one piece here, but if you're going to leave this up here. Storage. Yeah, you got a storage place right here. So this is where you keep the pillows the bare sheets and the blankets right under here you could also keep other things here like towels and everything and then you just close this here and one cool thing about this uh we got this amazing yeah you got this feature. amazing feature right here you just bring this out and pull this up magic let's go wow and you have a bed for two people but for filipinos for 10 people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the nice thing is when i designed this house this was always the idea we needed a big couch down here that could open up into a queen size bed i wanted a queen size bed because that's the standard for two people to sleep on and when i tell you guys this thing is comfortable i mean success could vouch for it yeah, it is comfortable i i prefer sleeping here than sleeping in any other places the, the, actually the first couple of nights that i slept when i moved into the house i slept on this couch and i really enjoyed it because the it's cushions so, is really wide yeah, like nice just, and soft you could roll around yeah. especially when you put the sheets down it really feels like a, a proper queen bed yeah uh, so again if you come here and you stay here as a group of friends even if you're four people two downstairs two upstairs you have more than enough space to exist sure. here together of course this house could host up to 10 people man i know 10 people <laughs> especially backpackers who just traveling around like us you know we always want to find the best and cheapest accommodation before we go upstairs can we take a look at the bathroom so this one bathroom. of one of my favorite you know spots about this entire house is the bathroom it's freaking big like you can do any anything man. <laughs> for me a bathroom is a safe space it's a holy space i love being in the bathroom Right. Whether you're on the toilet, you're taking a shower, for me it was important. From the second that you look at the door, you feel safe, you feel excited to be in here, and you feel comfortable. My idea was you envision coming back home from a long day of surfing, it's raining outside, it's cold, which happens in Chargao. You're muddy and you're sandy and you just want to go inside, rinse off, and take a nice warm shower. That was the idea. So when you see this interior space of the house only being 15 square meters, 
This is like an additional seven square meters just makes up the bathroom alone, which is huge relative to the size of the rest of the house. Right. So you have a plywood door made with hardwood and digbao cladding. This is a local bamboo. It's cladded on both sides of the door. And then we have the wonderful bathroom. It's, uh, it's paved all the walls with black cement. Uh, so it gives it this darker color. We've got one nice window in here, plenty of light, so you have lots of room. We also have this weird kind of smart mirror, which wasn't the best purchase in the world because it's not bright enough. I want to upgrade this in the future. Uh, you got one sink. We've got a cabinet that's coming here on the way in the future. Um, you've got your toilet, which is uh, you know, a comfortable toilet with a hydraulic uh, cover, so it never slams down, uh, which was also very important. A bum gun, and then obviously the amazing shower, which is my favorite part. Um, it's a huge shower, you know, relative to the size of the tiny house. I've seen tiny house designs before and I've seen small house designs and I didn't want to have a shower where you had to go like this. Yeah. I wanted a shower where you come in here, you've got plenty of space, you could shower two people together at the same time, you could shower 10 people here at the same time if you really wanted to. <laughs> 10 people. <laughs> you've got a waterfall shower and you've got a, uh, a press and you've got a foot uh, shower as well and it's all heated and it gets very, very hot. If you want to make it hot, you can be super, super hot in here. Yeah, I've, um, I've tried it a lot of times. So that's uh, that's pretty much a shower. The floor, this whole design of this bathroom was designed 100% by me, inspired by a design in a hostel in Cebu called the Flying Fish Hostel. They have a very similar bathroom to this with the same Middle Eastern style uh, tiles, and that was the important part for me. Being Middle Eastern, I wanted to add touches of the Middle East in this house. That's why you have the Persian carpet. That's why you have these tiles. You're from everywhere in the world, man. <laughs> I'm an international you're, man. You're from US, you're from India, you're from <laughs> Israel. <laughs> uh, oh. but yeah, this, uh, this bathroom was designed for comfort, for safety, for feeling comfortable. Yeah. And you could come here and really enjoy your time here. Wow. Look at the bathroom, guys. It's just one of my favorite places in this house. And last but not least, we've got the loft area, which is upstairs. Uh, we just actually finished installing this right now. This is a, uh, a hardwood, a local hardwood here in Chargal, um, sort of guardrail for the stairs. After a lot of feedback from friends and family who told me, you've got to be careful with people walking up and down the stairs, especially if you're drunk or if you're coming back home and you just need to pee in the middle of the night, you need a guardrail. So we just finished installing this this week and it looks really, really nice. I like the way that it came out. Yeah. Kind of makes it feel like, like it looks like a little bit of a cabin, like a Western cabin. Uh, up here, the headboard, which makes up the closet, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, this is my first surfboard I ever s purchased in Chargao. I, uh, I broke it in half in Jacking Horse Surf Break by Cloud9 trying to impress a girl. Uh, so <laughs> I put it back together after around a year of it being broken apart and then we glued it, we wrapped it up, we epoxied it and we painted it and now we're gonna have a mural that goes up on there. But obviously because we're in Chargal, you need the vibe of surf. So yeah. nothing better than having a big ass surfboard in the entrance of the house. A lot of people come here just for surfing, you know. So it's really important to have some uh, kind of design in your house. All these uh, stairs. Uh, before we go up, uh, yeah. this light is really cool here, man. Yeah, it's a native native looking lamp that I bought here on the island. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I see uh, almost most of the restaurants and places I go to, they have similar lights like this. These, all these stairs too, by the way, it's all native cocoa lumber wood, which is not the strongest wood in the world. But for some reason, when they first constructed these stairs, really, really, really great. And they've lasted amazing, even through the typhoon that kind of destroyed this house, which we'll get into later. All right. Uh, this is the upstairs. This is the bedroom. Obviously, it still needs a little bit of work. It's not perfect yet. Yeah. But we've got a queen size bed that was custom made from Mandawe Foam in Cebu. So you know you have the ultimate comfort here. It's a 12 inch mattress. So it's super, super, super comfortable. For me, the most important thing ever when you come to an accommodation and you sleep is comfort with the bed and it needs to be airy. It can't be hot and muggy up here. So that was the idea of this really, really comfortable bed. You've got two beautiful windows that show you the beautiful views of Santa Fe, all the green jungle and the rice fields in the background. Yeah, look at the view from the window here, guys. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a very cool view. So they're beautiful, beautiful windows, and these are all custom curtains. Uh, the, all these curtains are blackout curtains, so you can actually black out the entire house, right. but they were custom tailored for the house for each window individually. As well up here, something that we designed and we're really, really happy about, this is a master switch for all the lights. So when you come upstairs and you don't want to head back downstairs to turn any of the lights on because you don't want to walk up the stairs, you just, all the lights in the house completely turn off. 
wow. and you can just be in the darkness and stay up here. You don't have to go back downstairs to turn off the lights. And then you also don't have to walk the stairs in the darkness. For me, this was very important to have this master switch. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the main designs. For right now, you just have a little side bed piece here. This was a Digbao art design that was designed by my friend Sar. So we cladded this wall design with this sort of diamond portal. And then also this entire wall was cladded with Digbao. So this whole wall is Tigbao bamboo designed in a vertical and horizontal design. All right. Um, other than that, you've got a two horsepower AC system, which can cool this entire house in about 30 seconds to 30 one minute. Seconds. <laughs> yeah. Even on this super hot day, because this is a loft, it gets very hot on the second floor. Yeah. Because all the hot air goes from the downstairs to the upstairs, it gets super, super hot in here. But this AC can power down and cool down the entire house in around 30 seconds to one minute, even when it's super hot. Yeah. But obviously, if you want to keep the whole house cool, you just close the blackout blinds everywhere and it keeps the house a little bit colder, even on these really hot days. Um, as well, we've got a solar fan. This is a battery operated fan that can also hook up to a solar panel that's out there on that window. All right. uh, and so even when you have a brownout, you have at least a few hours of a fan uh, working here. We're going to get a couple more of these. So you always have access to fans, even when it's uh, yeah, brown out both upstairs and downstairs. Yeah, it's very, very important because brownouts do happen on this island. <laughs> Other than that, we got a nice shag carpet on the ground just to make it comfortable to sit up here. But this is uh, sort of the masterpiece of the second floor. This is a closet bench. It's kind of been something we've been upgrading and downgrading. It started off as just a place to hold the surfboard. And then Typhoon Odette happened and it destroyed the house. And so we built up on it to, to restructure it and make it stronger. And then it turned into a bookshelf. And lastly, it turned into a closet. And now it actually has a closet where you can store all of your clothes. You got two shelves here and you've got a bar uh, for a hanger. So you can store all your clothes here. Uh, one last thing that we're gonna probably do is just install like a little bit of a curtain so you can close this and you don't have to look at your clothes. But uh, the idea of this is you're gonna have flower pots up here which are those and a book shelf coming all the way down here. And then if you really want it to work, this could be a standing desk as well yeah. to work with your computer. Um, but yeah, that's the upstairs area. That's the loft. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's the bedroom. It's uh, it's this, it's the place where you're probably going to spend the most time if you stay here Yeah. because you're going to be sleeping here. But uh, that pretty much wraps the interior tour of the tiny house. So um, that was really uh, interesting and I love the presentation of the tiny house Chagall. I'm just really curious, um, how much did it you know, cost you to do like the actual amount for the house, the materials and everything in, in this house right now? So the proposed cost of the house from the original team who built it was 470,000 pesos, which is just short of $10,000 USD. All right. To know how much I actually spent on the entire house, you'll have to come to my channel because yeah. I'll reveal the full amount. What I can say was it was a lot more than the proposed amount and I had a lot of money stolen from me and disappeared in the process. It was a very, very stressful process putting this house together. Stolen from you and disappeared in the process, yeah. So we want to know more about that story. We got to head down to your channel, Buhai Nita. Yeah, I will be revealing the actual cost of the house in a few months time. Yeah. So if you really want to know exactly how much this cost per square meter. So let's, let's just say this, uh, the proposed amount is like 500,000. 500,000. So yeah, 500,000 pesos. Yeah, and, and people if, told me that if you know how to build a house, you can actually construct this house for 500,000 pesos. Minus the typhoon that happened in the middle of the house. Yeah. Because in the middle of construction, Typhoon Odette struck this island and destroyed this house pretty heavily. There was a lot of damage including the roof and the ceiling, which flew off, All right. uh, which we lost maybe around, I don't know, 70,000 pesos or, or 50,000 pesos in that process. Yeah, so how was the experience, the overall experience uh, with Typhoon Odette in the house? Well, I wasn't here inside of the house. I was actually in GL because I wasn't living here yet. This was still a construction site. But when I came here this, the next morning, a lot of the house had taken on a lot of damage. Again, we installed a ceiling and a roof all right. that week and all the nipa and all of it was gone it like the ceiling had picked up in one piece and flew off to somebody else's lot so we basically lost around 40 to fifty thousand pesos worth of roofing and materials and everything so the house then laid bare open for around one month we couldn't close the house because there was no materials for tarpaulins to cover the house there was no roofing and the island was in such a bad position such a bad 
uh, situation that I couldn't even justify trying to protect this house in that process because right. everybody else was struggling. Right. So only after about one month were we able to secure the materials to cover this house with a tarpaulin. Another month after that, we were able to make a temporary roof. And then my contractor and his family, Lewis, they lived in this house for around eight months while I was gone from the island. Um, they made the most of it while this was still a construction site. They were cooking in here, they lived in here, they used the bathroom, they used whatever they could to survive in the house until I came back. I helped them a little bit with their house as well, and then I was able to resume the construction of this house. All right. So that's kind of the timeline of the events of the tiny house. All right, that's, that's cool. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, so if there's anything you want to know about building a house in Chicago, the process and everything, the hassle, the good part, the bad side of it, Make sure to head down in the description below and follow Buhanita. He's going to be uh, posting videos about the entire process of the tiny house, Chagall. And lastly, just before we go and before we end this vlog, what's the message you want to send out there to people? People who are, you know, wanting to come to Chagall or people who are thinking of building a house in Chagall or people who want to stay in your house here in Chicago. Well, just if you want to stay, you're obviously always welcome. And just please send a message. Uh, I really, really hope to be accepting guests once I leave the country and start traveling again. So once this house is empty, you can come and stay here and experience this house and all the work that I put into this house as well. Uh, if you want to build your own house in Chargao or in the Philippines in general, I, I implore you to think very heavily, whether you are Filipino or not Filipino, think very deeply and heavily about what you're willing to do and how much personal like pain and stress you're willing to put yourself through because it is not an easy process at all especially in the island of Chargao finding trustworthy construction workers and a trustworthy team it's something that every person who's built a structure here will tell you it is very very difficult so i consider i would tell you consider it very heavily talk to a lot of people before you embark on the experience and just know that anything that is proposed to you will take at least double or triple the amount of time that means the cost of the money and the duration of the time to construct will take at least double or triple. You have to consider that before you begin the process. All right. All right, guys, it was nice having you today and having my brother Ty here. So before we go, I've been living here for two weeks and this place is really amazing. We did some work that maybe we, we're going to show you in this vlog, like facing the road and, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. So I've been here and... Um, Ty is a very good friend of mine who have turned brothers, so we are brothers right now, and he invited me to be his first guest in the tiny house Chagall, which I'm really honored to be here and be the first guest, and to also give my feedback from the house. So when I got here, he asked me like, what do you think of the house, and you know, house everything and i told him like yeah this is what i think it's amazing and i'm overall i'm proud of him for building his own house like this is his house that he can sleep and be like oh i'm sleeping in my house you mm -hmm. know it's it's really something amazing yeah. it, it is something i'm i'm really proud of him for and that's why today we want to do this video to educate you on building a house in Chicago or what uh, 500,000 pesos house could be like yeah yeah or triple the amount that he just told you but you're gonna know more about that later in his uh videos but this is also to inspire you guys out there that you can do whatever you want to do as long as you put your mind to it so everything that he have uh, explained to me about the challenges and everything he never gave up and he's still building the house Every, uh, i've been here for two weeks for the past two weeks, uh, these guys have been coming here every day working on the house. It's cost a lot of money. I've been with him. We went to buy stuff for the house every single day. Every day materials. Every day we go out to buy materials. I, I was surprised of how much he's spending. So his mom, his monthly expenditure is really, really high. So but I, you are a millionaire, man. <laughs> he just not, got, not anymore this guy, after this house. This guy is a millionaire. Yeah, he's just he's just so simple. I've been here every single day. He's been spending money for the house, for workers, for food and everything. And I'm just really happy to do this video. That's why I actually waited for this time. To yeah, we waited for a nice video. sunny day. Yeah, not just nice sunny day, but I waited to stay here and to give my overall, you know, experience, total, or, tiny yeah, tiny feedback, experience. and yeah. So. I actually wanted you to share your story with the world so that people can see and, you know, 
know what to expect if you want to build a house in the philippines right yeah so that's it guys and we love you guys thanks for watching this video so that's it and if you have any question please make sure to comment down below he's gonna answer you or i'm gonna answer you there and hope to see you guys in the next one just before you go i'm success i do travel videos around the philippines and soon around the world and if you want to stay tuned for more of my travels raw and authentic vlogs please make sure to subscribe on the channel hit that notification bell so every time i post a video you get notified and before you go make sure to subscribe to buhay nita so the link is right in the description below we love you guys and see you in the next one bye bye bye, -bye.